Hello, my name is Christopher Marland, a Snowflake Solutions architect here at Aimpoint Digital and also a Snowflake data superhero. And welcome to this video on advanced data transformations in Snowpark for Python. Now, don't worry, uh, when I use the term advanced, I know that that often implies that something is very, very difficult. Uh, but I think actually what we're going to be doing in this video is very, very doable. So what do I mean by advanced? What I mean by advanced is that we're going to transition away from the kind of ad hoc data transformations that we've been doing. And we're going to look at how to make our data transformations professional, scalable, and automated. That said, this video will be a little easier to follow if you have some pre-existing knowledge on Snowpark for Python. If you don't, don't worry. Um, you can watch the previous videos um, and click click the link that appears to do that and that should get you right up to speed. So what are we going to cover in this video? Well, in this video, we'll start off with permanent UDFs, looking at how they help us to scale and automate our data transformations. Then we'll move on to merges, which are absolutely essential for keeping our, our transformations up to date. Then we'll talk about reading data from internal stages. Very, very important, again, in keeping that data up to date. And then that leads us nicely into how to actually automate our Snowpark for Python data transformations using stored procedures and then tasks. So that sounds good. Um, let's, let's get cracking. So in the description below, you should see a link to a zip file. Within that zip file, there will be a .sql file, um, which should give us our startup code. And if you are on the Snow site UI, um, just click on these three dots up here and create a worksheet from SQL file. Now I've already done this. Um, so I have my uh, setup code and just run all of these statements and that should give us the data that we want. Okay, so in your zip folder, you should also have this Jupyter Notebook and you should see something that looks very, very similar to this. I've already run my imports and created my session. Um, and you know I have a warehouse named after me and a database named after me, which is awfully nice. Um, so to start off with, let's just look at our data. Okay. So you can see we've got some incredibly, incredibly similar data here. You know, same credit card number, ID, etc. Um, the big difference is, is that here we've got a credit card type and a sale amount. And here we have got the actual items that made up that transaction. So this is how we could transform that data. Um, we flatten it first, um, that's a join table function. And then from the value column that's produced by that flattening, um, we can then use JSON extract path text in order to grab those values. Okay, so this is what that looks like once we've done those transformations. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to create an internal stage for our, our UDF. And we're going to use SQL for that, so that's demo session.sql and let's create or replace stage demo stage and because of lazy execution i'm going to have to do dot collect in order for this code to actually run okay so i'll do that now demo stage successfully created yippee okay then i'm going to do demo session dot file dot put and I want to put this file here. So we've got a very, very, very simple function called solf alphabetically. We input a list and we get a sorted list in return. Nice and easy. So I'm going to, so the file name is udf.py. We want to put it into demo stage and auto compress should be set to false. Okay, from that, 
and that seems to have worked. Wonderful. So now what we need to do is we need to actually register that UDF. Um, so we're going to register that from a file. So I'm going to create a variable called salt sort alphabetically. Um, and then I want to do demo session dot UDF dot register from file. And in that file path um, should be demo stage slash UDF dot PY. Funk name um, is going to be sort alphabetically. Uh, let's keep things simple and consistent here. Then um, a return type is going to be array type. Input types, I'm just going to actually set this to variant type just because it's a bit easier to interpret things as, as variants than it is to interpret them as arrays. Name. This might seem a bit redundant, but we have to specify a name. Replace, set that to true, um, because if we're updating the logic of our code, we want to do that, the place there. Stage location is demo stage. Again, seems a little redundant, but has to be done. And then most importantly is permanent is going to be set to true. So we're not going to need to rerun these three, um, these three cells, but actually just the last two cells. Um, we're not going to need to rerun them every single time we do our data transformations. This is a, a one time thing. And then, yeah, when, when we update the logic of our code, um, if we want to introduce a bit more logic or, or a little less, don't, don't think we can cut anymore, but um, if we do want to make changes, we can rerun this, but most times we're not going to. So let's do that registration there. Wonderful. Okay. So repeat the transformation above with the UDF. So I'm going to create a data frame called sales items flat W UDF with UDF. Okay, and I'm just going to be very lazy and copy and paste here um, because, well, why not? Grand. So the only thing I want to change here is with items. First, I will pass this as JSON. I want it to say this. This is JSON. Please, please do what you do to JSON. And then I'm going to use our solve alphabetic, sort alphabetically um, UDF. And there we are. So let's have a look at that. Great, that looks wonderful. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a, a create a table. Um, we'll call that sales items flat UDF uh, dot right mode. Put that in overwrite dot save as table and let's call that sales items and dot right operations they do not need to um to, to you know have a dot collect at the end they will just run so there we are we've created a permanent udf and and used it um and we won't need to create that again um, unless we want to change that logic. So quickly, I just want to explain what a merge is. Many of you will will know, um, but just indulge me for a minute. Um, essentially, what a merge is, is it's trying to solve for situations where you are getting a lot of data coming in and, and you don't really, you, you can't assure that you're not going to duplicate rows when you're just inserting into a table. So with a merge, you actually do some comparison. And in that comparison, you'll see, okay, what's already in there? Um, if it's already in there, we, we want to ignore, or perhaps it's already in there, but it's changed slightly, so you want to update. Um, or you know, there may be situations where it's not in there and actually you want to get rid of that. 
Um, so a merge just allows you to have some flexibility in what you do as your data is, is changing and being constantly transformed and updated. Hopefully, hopefully that's clear. Okay, so now we're actually going to do the merge. Um, so we will read a CSV. You should have the CSV in your zip folder. Um, we're going to read that with pandas. And let's just have a look at that pandas data frame. Um, so you see we've got our sales items here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new uh, data frame called new sales item data SP, SP for snow park. Um, and we're going to do a write pandas operation and create a temp table, meaning we don't have to worry about dropping it later. So let's run that. There we are. OK, so this looks very familiar. And what we want to do is we want to merge. Uh, because if you if you look closely at the data, um, and I'm not going to kind of compare and contrast, uh, just take my word for it, that there are certain rows that are the same. And in, in that case, what we want to do is we want to just ignore that. So we're going to do a merge. And to do that, I'm going to start by specifying a target table. And that target is going to be sales items, which we created earlier. Then um, we're going to uh, create a variable called merged, and that's going to be target.merge. We specify a source, and that source is going to be that new sales item data snow park. Join expression, um, what we'll do there is we will do target ID equals equals new sales item data snow park ID. OK. And we specify clauses. And doing that, what we want to do is uh, when not matched, insert so when not matched then and here we we create a dictionary that just says you know use this use that um, which will take a little bit of time um, so I'll just do one example um, ingestion ID new sales item data snow park ingestion ID. Okay, I'm going to pause the recording. Um, I suggest you pause the video and, and, and just try this out and try to finish this yourself. Okay, so I now have all my code. I'm just going to run that. And what I want to do is I just want to run the below and this should give me some stats. So we've got rows inserted 10, updated 0, deleted 0. Um, and that checks out. OK, so there we are. We have merged in and you can see that that is very good for when we want to have automated code. It's a, it's a key building block to that because you can't always be sure that you're going to get perfect files um, um, or anything like that. Uh, so it's always good to make sure that you, you have a system in place and merge lets you apply the appropriate logic to do that. So reading from stages is pretty simple in Snowpark for Python, at least I think so. Um, and it's also, again, really key for automated transformations because this is a great uh, place for your new data to reside. Um, so reading it from there is, is going to be very, very helpful. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some files, and these files should be uh, in that zip folder. So file.put new sales items.json. I'm going to put that in demo stage auto compress false. false. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll just copy and paste that um, for new sales delete items there. OK, so let's run that. And there we are. And I'll just quickly demonstrate how to read from stage data 
for, for just one of these and I'll do that for the new sales items. So I'm just gonna create a variable called Jason demo session dot read dot options. So options uh, is where we specify within a dictionary, the kind of things you would specify in a file format object if you were doing this in SQL. So the one thing I want to do is I want to strip the outer array. So I'm going to set that to true in this options dictionary. And then I'll do dot JSON because we're reading JSON. So we do dot JSON. If you're reading a CSV, you do dot CSV. Um, and that's going to be demo stage new underscore sales items dot JSON. Okay. If I do JSON dot show, we'll see a reading of this file. So there we are. Pretty simple, I think, um, but pretty key for automating. So in this final section, we're going to actually automate our data transformations in Snowpark for Python. And the way we do so is using a combination of stored procedures and tasks. Now, tasks are very old, but essentially tasks, what they are, is a way to do kind of time-based automations of, of anything uh, going on in Snowpack. Store procedures are also old, but the, the functionality has changed a little bit, or at least more functionality has been introduced. Now you can have Python-based stored procedures. So store procedures no longer have to just execute SQL code. Um, what's also great is we now have Python worksheets in public preview at the time of recording. And what you can do in Python worksheets is you can actually write those Snowpark based Python stored procedures, test them out, debug them before then deploying them in a very, very easy and simple way within the SnowSite UI. So what we're going to do is we're going to test things out a little bit in our uh, Jupyter Notebooks, and then we're going to copy and paste that into the SnowSite UI with a little bit of, uh, you know, just a bit of debugging and, 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 and changing of things. So hopefully that's all clear. Um, if not, I think it should be relatively easy to follow along. So let's start by getting things ready. So we want to just create a sort of transformed table that we're going to be merging into. And I'm just going to call that sales data. Um, and this code's pre-written for you. So you just need to uh, run this. And let's just show that so we know what we're, we're looking at. And we have here a credit card number, date, time, the ID, the items, and the sale amount all together. Wonderful. Okay. So now we want to create data frame readers of the two .json files in our, our code. And I'm going to be a little bit annoying. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, pause this video and let you work that out. Um, I'm going to be pausing the video a lot and, and doing the same thing. Okay, so here we are. Hopefully that was nice and easy. So let's run this. There we are. Okay. Um, so now we want to transform the the new data as you did with the old. You might notice it's ever so slightly different, um, but hopefully um, you'll 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 be fine with that, um, and you'll be able to work it out. So here I am. I'm going to pause the video once again. Okay, hopefully again, that wasn't too hard, but I think it, we're now at the point where, where I can kind of give you some independence on this. So I'm going to run and just check everything is fine. Yep, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so now we're going to do a merge statement. Um, again, you should know how to do this. So I'm going to pause the video and give you a little bit of time to, to do that. Great, okay, hopefully again, not too hard. Run that, see what's happened. Okay, we've got six inserts, very, very good. And then what we want to do is to drop the transient tables. So the way we do that is we do demo session dot table, new sales transient 
drop table, or not drop duplicates, drop table. Okay, and then what I will do is I'll just copy and paste this. Um, and we also want to drop new sales underscore items underscore transient. I dropped. Okay. And then just to finish off with what we're going to do is we're just going to remove those JSON files um, so that we can keep adding newer, newer, newer data. So we do demo session dot SQL. And the SQL I'm going to do is I'm going to remove at demo stage slash new sales items dot JSON. And because it's .sql, I need to do .collect because of that lazy execution. Um, get rid of the items there. And I'll run that. OK, so we've got those two files removed. So this all seems to work. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to actually go into the Snow site UI now um, and, and, and try this out with um, Python worksheets, putting them into store procedures, and then we'll create some tasks on top. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of undo some of my destruction at the end there. And I want to uh, sort of restore the table as it was. So I'm just going to um, rerun this cell up here where we, we overwrite and create that table name of sales data. And I'm also just going to put the files back into the internal stage. So I'm going to rerun this cell up here. OK, so I think we are nice and ready to go into the Snowset UI and actually start building some store procedures. So here I am back in the Snow Site UI in my Advanced Data Transformations folder. And what I want to do is I want to create some store procedures using the transformations we've already done. Um, and then I want to put them into stops, yeah, put them into store procedures and then put those store procedures into tasks. Okay. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to start by creating a Python worksheet here. And I'm going to rename this to SP1. You can see we have some um, some pre-written code here. And I'll just, just walk you through it a little bit. So we have our function that's in uh, that's, that's called main, and we have a, a session parameter. So that just means it's going to inherit the session. Um, and, and that's called session. So we're going to have to rename all of our stuff from, from demo session to session. Um, in the settings, you'll see the handler is main, and we have a little bit of an explanation, but basically it just means which function should we we run, what, which is the main function, OK? So ours is called main. There's, there's really no need to change that, I don't think. Um, you, you can if you want, but it's not something I'm going to do. So you have our imports at the top. Um, we don't really need uh, these, but I'm just going to copy in uh, the code that we, we're going to use. So main is, again, our, our, our function. That's fine. Um, and I'm using a try accept statement because I, I and I think that's good practice when you are doing Python store procedures to always do them in a try and accept. So you can do that exception capturing. Um, and, and when you're testing, you can see, OK, this is what's going wrong. Um, so here we have our, our session demo session renamed session. And this is the cell that is um, looking into our internal stage. Um, and creating transient tables based on what's in those uh, in, in that stage. Okay, so the one thing I'm just going to do in settings is the return type. I'm going to change that to a string. Um, so what I want is this is a success. I will return success. If there is um, an exception, then I'll I'll return that exception. And maybe instead of success, I want to add a little bit more there and say um, two transient tables were created according to the .json files in your internal stage. That's so a little bit more descriptive. Um, gives us something a little bit better there. 
Okay, so let's control enter that and see if it works. Um, this, it, uh, as of time of recording, Python worksheets, they're in public preview, so not working perfectly well. Um, so I'm just going to control enter again and, and see if that, that works now. Okay, we're compiling. Very, very good news. Okay, and here we have our result. Um, that's good news in my books. Okay, so I'm going to create another Python worksheet. I'm going to rename that to SP2. Um, and then in settings, I'm just going to change that to string again, because that, that's something I always forget to do. That is a, a very big problem of mine. Um, and and, and I, I imagine I'm not the only person. So I'm pasting in some code here. Um, this is the part where we transform the transient tables. We join them together. And then we do our merge statement, OK? And I want to return the the results of that merge um, and say, you know, this is updated, et cetera, et cetera, um, except exception as E, OK? Now, one big tweak I've made here, kind of little, but mean, is, is very significant, is instead of using a variable called sort alphabetically, I'm using this function called call UDF. And the reason I'm doing that is because when we were developing in our, our, um, our Jupyter Notebook, um, what we were doing was we'd created a variable called sort alphabetically and then registered that as a UDF. So we were able to use the sort alphabetically variable to reference the UDF. Here, we're not doing that. We don't have a variable called sort alphabetically. Therefore, in order for you know the, the, the snowflake fairies to understand what we're talking about, we have to use this function called call UDF. Um, and we just want to you know um, name the UDF and then specify that which we want to transform. OK, so I think that that's fairly, fairly easy. Um, but yes, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to run this now, and we'll see if this works, and I will click run again. OK, we have success. The results are we have six rows inserted, zero updated, and zero deleted. That sounds very familiar. OK, one more uh, worksheet, so we'll call this SP3. Um, and in this one, what we want to do is we want to just do our cleanup. So session.table, drop, drop, and then we collect these session.sql statements that remove those files from the stage. Um, that should all make a lot of sense. Settings, return type, string, absolutely key to remember. And let's run that. Cleanup successful. Very, very good news. OK, so what I want to do now is I want to actually turn these into store procedures. Um, and the way I do that is I'm going to click Deploy. We call this demo, demo pi proc one. And I'll just click replace if exists just to be just to be sure. I don't think it does exist. OK, there we are. Very good. And I'll do that again. Demo pi prop to deploy. Wonderful. And one last time, demo pi prop three. The deployment of these Python store procedures is much, much simpler now with these Python worksheets. I think they are very, very good. They're a little bit clunky. Um, what's a bit of a problem is when you're deploying this way, um, it's quite difficult to enter um, parameters, to introduce parameters to your store procedures. Um, but hopefully that that is only a temporary issue. Um, and when we have general availability, that will be solved, one hopes. OK, so in order to actually put this in action, I'm going to create a SQL worksheet. Um, and let's just call this uh, demo auto task. Doesn't really matter what you call the, um, the worksheet. 
Um, but what I want to do is I want to create a task um, that, uh, well, I want to create three tasks that run those stored procedures. So how I'm going to do that, create or replace task demo task prop one, um, make things nice and consistent. Warehouse is going to be uh, the one named after me. Um, schedule, I'm going to do this according to cron schedule. Um, and let's do that according to America, Los Angeles. That's uh, the, the snowflake time zone. Um, and then I just want to uh, do as call demo pi proc one. Okay, that has been successfully created. So I'm going to do another demo task proc two. And in reality, you want to be a bit more um, descriptive with your your task names. Uh, so I'm going to do that after demo task proc one. Um, I always do suggest, though, if you're chaining tasks, that you you actually give them some consistent name or else things can get very confusing very quickly. Okay, so I'm not scheduling this one. I'm just setting this to go after demo task part, demo task proc one. Um, and then I want to call demo pi proc two. Create or in fact, actually, let's just copy and paste this one. Um, and we'll call this three. We want to run after two and we want to call three okay now now that i have these what i want to do is i want to activate them and i do that with an alter task resume um, and i have to do it in in you know backwards order um or else it'll give me give me grief um, there we are um, and so to test this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the um, the Jupyter notebook, uh, and we'll we'll rerun the appropriate cells, um, and then we'll we'll do some testing here. So let's jump back into that Jupyter notebook. Okay, so back in Jupyter notebook, I just want to very quickly. I'm just going to reput those files into the stage which were removed um, in that last task uh, or the last procedure um, and then I'm just going to rerun uh, this sort of transformation of the initial data um, which will mean that our base table is going to revert back to its um, state prior to us testing those stored procedures. Okay, so now that we're back in uh, the snow site UI, I just want to do a select count from sales data just to see what our original state looks like. So we've got 30 rows. Okay, that's, uh, that's essentially what I thought. And then I'm just going to execute task demo task proc one. Um, and I'll run that. And what I'll do is I'll just pause the recording here, give that a little bit of time to run, and then we'll see if the number has changed. Okay, hopefully that should have run. So let's check in. And yes, perfect. We have 36 rows. So that is exactly what we wanted. So that is, that is us done. We've successfully automated some data transformations in Snowpark for Python. What I'm just going to do is I'm just going to uh, paste in some cleanup code. So we want to alter the tasks and suspend them, then drop them. Um, and then we want to drop those procedures. So let's just run those. And there we are, that's good. Um, that just means they're not going to be running and incurring cost, um, which is very, very important. So thank you very much for watching everybody. I hope you've learned a lot about automating your data transformations in Snowpark for Python. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe and make sure to watch out for future videos. Thank you very much.